Good evening all you plastic model builders out there. This is Dan Leone, Plastic Model Building 101. I just wanted to tell you that uh, I've been off the radar for a few months, probably even longer than that. As you can tell by the background on my uh, in this room here, I've moved into a new house. I have a bigger hobby room and and everything here is just bigger and better and, and so forth. So it's, uh, it's just great. Uh, great to have a new house and so forth and not only that I've been busy with the uh, IPMS Houston chapter model show that we've had a few weeks ago and then after that we also had the uh, we also had the uh, um, the uh, the West Houston uh, wing open house at West Houston Airport um, despite the weather we did have a pretty good show and just as recent I went to California to the Chino Plains of Fame Air Museum in Chino California and I have to tell you for those of you who have not been to Chino California to, for the Plain, Plains of Fame Air Museum it is a great museum um, bar none um, all, most of these airplanes fly there are some airplanes that are going under restoration, um, and um, they also had an air show while I was there, and I got to tell you, bar none, it was the best air show I've ever been to, and I hope I get the opportunity to go back again next year to see the air show. Um, anyway, while I was there, I saw a uh, the, the, uh, the real Japanese Zero A6M50, and had the original Sakai engine in it. And when I saw this airplane fly, I mean it. I mean, idling on the ground, the engine sounded like a. Uh, it sounded like a a. Um, 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 it sounded like a Model A Ford. Uh, just you know, and then not only that, but when we started flying the air, I mean when they started flying the airplane. I mean, when it went to a climb, it climbed like a homesick angel. On top of that, it just, it sounded like, uh, the engine sounded like a Singer uh, sewing machine. So, uh, it's unbelievable. Um, I'll give you a little background, a little history background of the, uh, of, the, of the museum, of the Chino Airfield. Actually, it was called Cal Aero. Um, during World War II, um, well, before the United States ended the war, um, a huge flight school opened up called Cal Aero, and then until when the United when the United States got into the war, they they trained thousands of pilots uh, uh, for the Army Air Corps, and uh, a lot of them were trained in uh, you know fighters and bombers and so forth, and then that that they went overseas, and then. Uh, then to about 1944, when everything was starting to shut down because the war was starting to draw to a close, uh, especially when the Germans surrendered in Europe in 1945, a lot of these war-weary airplanes found their way back to Chino, California, where a lot of them met their demise and and being scrapped. So um, then, of course, when the Japanese surrendered, it was the same thing. So anyway. Um, uh, it's great. Uh, it, it's a great museum, bar none, and uh, it's just unbelievable. Here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna introduce you to my my modeling. This is my modeling companion. This is Boudreaux from from Morgan City, Louisiana. Ooh -wee. Okay, Boudreaux, what are we gonna build? What are we gonna build, Boudreaux? Hmm? What are we gonna build? Hmm? What? What? Oh, okay. You want okay? Oh, oh. He 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 says okay. Dan, let's get on this model building up here. Okay, Boudreaux, we're gonna go ahead and start on our model building. Enough talk about the enough talk about the Chino Air Museum. Let's get started with our model building. Okay, Boudreaux, if you don't mind, but you need to get down and and keep out the mice. Thank you, Boudreaux. Um. Anyway, um. The kit we're going to start on is the Tamiya 148 scale A6M5C Zero Fighter, also known as a Zeke. Um, this is an older kit. Um, Tamiya just re-released the A6M3 uh, and also the A6M50 kit. Um, but um, I have to tell you, this I think this is a far better kit, even though the other one's better. But I've built this kit numerous of times, and this is to me, this is bar none the best kit ever. I mean, this kit was built in, this kit was manufactured in the 70s, uh, and, and bar none, this is the best kit ever. So, um, that to me has ever made. So, all right, we're going to go ahead and, and open our box here. 
There's a box there, the box cover. Good box art. <laughs> okay. Come across our parts. As you can see, uh, the box put in the in the plastic in the plastic bags here. Um, for those of you who have small children, always make sure you throw your bags away. Okay, uh, tear them up and throw them away because you know little kids they can get a hold of them and put them over their head. Next thing you know, they they smell themselves. And also, you might want to keep your parts away from little kids as well too because they like to chew on them and choke on them. And then what? Then you go. You have to go to the ER. So emergency room. So you, we don't want that. So just a little safety, little safety disclaimer here. Um, we take the uh, take the parts out. We have the cowling here. This is this is the cowling. Do that later. And uh, take all this out. Um, the parts. The parts are just great. I mean, yeah, there's a little bit of race panel lines, but we can we can we can handle that. Um, and also, I mean, as you can see, no flash, hardly any flash at all on this kit. I mean, this is the best. You know, to me, uh, I mean, this is a for a 1960s or 70s kit. This is this is the a, a damn good, uh, well engineered kit. So. Um, also, as you can see, the kit has several options where you can build it with the gear down or the gear up. So, I like to build it with the gear down. So, of course, when I was a little kid, I always built it with the gear up so I could fly it around the room. So, <laughs> okay. So, we'll go ahead and throw this away in our little plastic bag in my trash can here. Then, we have the... Then we have the, the, the clear parts. We have the clear parts. And uh, the clear parts, as you can see, you have an option whether to either build it open or build the, co the canopy closed. Either one. So, okay. We'll take that out. And as you can see, the other kits, the fuselage, the wings and everything, the engine cowlings. Engine cow the engine cowlings you can build either the uh, open or closed. Mostly times the uh, the engine was uh, the cow flash were open during run up or during climb out to keep the engine temperatures in the green. So, okay, now we're gonna come across here. Uh, this is, this is the instructions. Uh, that to me has generously have put in two sets of instructions. One's in Japanese, and the other one in English. And looks like we got German and I think. If I'm not mistaken, I think there's Spanish in here too, but I don't see it. But anyway, but as you can see, the I mean, this is this is the best instruction uh, sheet ever. I mean, uh, this is pretty straightforward. I mean, you can even cut the the flaps open to put the the flaps on. You know, put the flaps down and so forth, or you can just leave them up. Also, you have the option where you can drill the holes out where you can put. Uh, put the uh, air-to-air rockets on them because uh, late in the war the, the Japanese a 6 m 5 did have air-to-air -air rockets to intercept uh, B-29 raids so um, and also here you can see that um, there are different uh, color schemes you can paint uh, most of these zeros were painted IJN green Imperial Japanese Navy green with the IJN Imperial Japanese Navy uh, gray scheme. So this is a, uh, uh, and not only that, but uh, this kit is also it would be a great weathering subject too, because uh, especially in the South Pacific and you know where maintenance facilities were practically non-existent, a lot of these airplanes were just you know they 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 just flew until they just couldn't fly anymore. Either they were just too damaged or partial worn out or so forth. So anyway, but. Um, but this is great. This is the this is the best um, this is the best kit ever 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 manufactured. So it's it's unbelievable. So okay, um, what we want to do now? The very first step we we want to do in our uh, in our in our uh, in our building process is we want to wash the parts. 
You're asking, she, Dan. For those of you who haven't seen my previous, my previous, uh, my previous uh, videos, uh, you know, why do we need to wash parts? Well, I'll tell you why you need to wash parts. For one, um, when the at the at the at the uh, uh, plastic model company factory. When the plastic goes in, there's there's these set of molds. Molds is kind of like you know when you see your mom or your wife or whoever you know you know they bake cookies or they build or they bake uh, cupcakes. You know, well the cupcakes is a ex prime example. It is a mold, or a bunt cake. I mean, it's a mold. Okay, so um, anyway, they always spray. Of course, now they got nonstick now, but but uh, but back in the day when they had this put like uh, uh, Pam or nonstick grease or whatever to keep keep everything from sticking. So so this is pretty much it right here. They spray the molds with a fine mold release agent and then they inject the parts uh, where and then you know the, the hot plastic and the hot plastic once it's cooled they take they take it off and of course they put the parts in the parts in bags and put the parts in boxes and the boxes in crates and so forth and they you know and the rest is history there so anyway i don't mean to get too technical but that's just me anyway um the very first thing we want to do is uh, i'm going to show you several several ways you can clean parts one testers plastic prep this is a great great uh, uh, substance to use um, the, the good thing about this is uh, you spray you spray this in your airbrush straight you can spray it clean all the parts off and and then just let it dry I mean it's alcohol it does evaporate it evaporates and just like that so so you can do that next one this is Tamiya uh, X20A thinner. This is straight alcohol, and uh, you can also put this in your airbrush, and you can use the same thing, or you can swab them down with a cotton swab. Either way, so either way you can do that. So now, if you don't want to get involved with chemicals, okay, I can understand that. Um, also, you might want to keep this away from little kids too, because they might think this is uh, cherry soda or strawberry soda. So you don't want to, you don't want them. Uh, you know drinking that so anyway that's just me so anyway now if you don't want to do that you can go to any supermarket dollar store and buy some Dawn this is a great product to have I mean uh, I mean you can use this uh, as you can see I've already have my little my little uh, my little bowl here full of lukewarm water and some Dawn in here and we can just go ahead and, and put the parts in there, soak them in and uh, scrub them down real good and then uh, rinse them off real good too and then uh, man, you will, I guarantee you, uh, you just won't regret it. So, um, so now, why do you want to wash the parts anyway? Well, like I said, you have a fine, you have a mold release agent that's oil based. You want to have a good bonding of your parts. When you're gluing your parts together, you want to have a good bond. Bond and oil don't mix. So, so if you do that, and of course, uh, you want to have a good, you have want to, you know, want to have a good paint job and so forth. You know, you always want to, you know, have your paint stick to the surface too. So you want, you know, you want to have that too. So, anyway. Those are a couple of things, you know, several reasons why you want to you want to um, uh, wash your parts. So anyway, so uh, so I'm going to start uh, I'm going to start my parts washing here and uh, we'll just take a short break. This is Dan Leone, Plastic Model Building 101. Happy washing.